yeah, I've been very privileged, obviously, to hang out with Alvin Scott. He comes here almost every year before the Masters. He's about a week here. He's grinding, getting ready for the majors. Uh, one thing that's really cool with Adam Scott is that he doesn't play 35 events a year. He loves to practice. And he was here before the Masters this year. I had some time with him, watching him practice. And if you think his swing is as good as it looks on video, you can't imagine how good it really is in person. And he hits this beautiful little small draw, and it's just amazing. And really, really a great privilege to watch him practice. And with Adam Scott, I think uh, from a trace perspective, it totally makes sense that it's pretty kind of linear or lateral, as Jake would say it, right? And it's pretty efficient, right? Uh, he's not only one of the, probably the, the great model for, for body track, but he's also a great model for TPI and the kinematic sequence. His swing is just about perfect. It looks perfect works perfectly and by last week he was in that playoff freaking missed that putt. but we also had siwu in that playoff too which is pretty fun great for tv but if we take it through his uh his seeing his swing and sequence here i'm guessing it's around a five iron six iron something like that and it's pretty pretty much poetry in motion right yeah it's it's the flow of the trace really that's that's so pretty so um Again, uh, I have no attachment to a trace or, or anything in particular. I've seen them all win, I've seen them all make money. But um, there's a lot of you out there that really love a linear trace, so here you go. Um, the, line, the, the thing that's, when I talk about the flow of the trace, it's the uninterrupted nature of the center of pressure movement. So he loads back, transitions, and then he's gonna go actually uh, slightly from that lead toe into that straight across, which would be right into the heel, right like that. It's beautiful. So um, when you see a linear trace that is as clean as this, just know that the player, and again, uh, it fits his pattern, just know that the player is blending, um, maybe seamlessly, uh, a lateral, a rotational, and a vertical component. Uh, to create that center of pressure. Yeah, it's just like... Yeah, straight across. Straight across. Yeah. I want to watch it over and bring it from the head. It's so beautiful. It's yeah. so good. So he's just one of those guys that not only looks good, but measures good. Um, what's his uh, track man numbers like? Because you talked about Brooks, uh, how good that was. Actually, I don't know his particular track man numbers. Okay. Uh, we haven't had a more on our track man in person. But uh, you can definitely guess. It's, yeah. It's probably 310 carry with driver. Yeah. And he's smoothing it out there. Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably three or four right with his zero face, maybe one or two face. It doesn't uh, doesn't look like he's trying too hard, that's for sure. And uh, this this gets into the, the the whole thing that we always talk about is good movers, good players. And it's so great when good movers are good players. Right. So uh, he's both. He, he, he would be a coaching dream. And I know that you said he's going to be forever part of the Harmon family. Yeah, for sure. He knows, he's known Claude probably since he was in college, UNLV days, and he's worked with Butch probably. Uh, you guys probably, I'm not sure when he was in college, probably early 90s. Yeah, UNLV, right? Right. Yeah. But uh, I think, uh, you know, you cannot not like Adam Scott, a guy like Adam Scott. Really a personable guy. I know my wife does. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I have a question about um, for me, Alex. A great question. Um, you guys just threw over, and yeah. really mentioned that was my child's question. But do you think that single leg clubs make pressure trace analysis between clubs? So oh, that's a, great, that's a question. great question. That is a great question. Um, you know, I would, could only speculate a guess. I'm, I'm sure you have opinions on this as well. I have There's not measured this. Guy. This is a Mike Shy question. Absolutely. This is a, one guy we're talking about. Right. So <laughs> the, it, it, we are talking, well, and, and maybe many Mike Shy students, but because um, uh, I would imagine, uh, and again, I, I've actually had, have you had Bryson's clubs in your hands? Oh, yeah. I have too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's only the irons that are the same length because yeah. once he gets the hybrids in the woods and whatever he's putting in there in the drive, yeah. 
Those are more traditional. I would imagine the pattern, um, not necessarily in the short game, but we're talking full swing. I would imagine that trace pattern would be more similar with those irons that are all the same length and uh, lie angle too, right? Yeah. So uh, I would imagine they're more similar than they're different. With that said, when he's hitting a different type of shot, just because his clubs are more similar, then you would see the, the differences in the trace pattern, say in a flighted wedge or a, uh, you know, an abbreviated trace with a flighted wedge or a pitch shot or a chip shot or a scoring shot. Yeah. I, think, I think his differences in his trace, what a great question. I think his differences in the trace would be more attributed to the different shots he tries to hit, even though the equipment is more similar. Yeah.